Welcome back to Magnum Farms after a short hiatus. I am Poverty Pony Patrick, and today we're going to be talking about the Palmetto State Armory 300 Blackout Boater Kit. This is a Magnum Entertainment Production. If you guys couldn't tell from the intro, the weapon is cleared, all the ammunition's in the safe, and there's none in this room. So getting into it, the reason I went with the Palmetto State Builders Kit is I, if you've watched any of our previous videos, you know I'm a broke college student and I absolutely hate spending more money than I have to. So um, I wanted a 300 blackout rig, didn't have the money to throw down for a BCM, so I went with the Palmetto State Armory Builders Kit. Uh, uh, they had it in a complete kit where they sold everything but the lower receiver. I bought the upper separately and then I found the lower parts kit and the SBA three pistol brace on sale the next day. So it worked out for me in the end. And I went with an Anderson lower receiver and we'll be cracking some jokes about this thing here later. But in grand thumb fashion, we'll go from tip to butt. So a pure muzzle device, it is a standard A2 30 cal bird cage. And out of a this short of a barrel it, with 300 blackout, it's about on par with a 16 inch 5.56 with a concussion and the recoil impulse, it's a little bit stronger, but not enough for me to wanna put a break on here. So this is just fine for me. I will be upgrading this to a Silencer Co. ASR flash hider, so I could have a quick attach mount for my Hybrid 46. I'm moving back. The barrel is a 4150 steel with a chrome Oli lining in there. It's not quite chrome lined, but again, it will hold up a lot better than a unfinished barrel like I have on my Ruger AR556. This is a seven inch Palmetto State Armory handguard. Um, now, some of you more high end folks that are willing to drop 400 bucks on a Noveski rail probably think this is garbage. But for me, uh, I'm kind of a no frills guy with my guns. So it's a pretty, pretty sturdy rail. So I have no complaints about it. Standard 750 diameter gas block with a regular old uh, gas tube. So moving back towards the upper receiver, the upper itself is a 7075 aluminum with a type three hard anodizing on it. Bolt carrier group is a Carpenter 158 tool steel. And I believe that is nitrite. don't quote me on that, but I'm not a machinist. I have no idea what the numbers mean with the metals, but it seems to be on par with everything we have in the industry. So the lower, now we're gonna crack some jokes about the lower. So you've heard some people say Anderson is just fine. Mill specs, mill spec. You've heard some people say Anderson is a complete dumpster fire. Um, I have a sample size of one. Uh, this receiver did need some minor modification and there were some QC issues on it, but I was pretty eager to get this thing built and didn't want to send it back to Anderson. So number one, the screw where the pistol grip, or excuse me, the hole where the pistol grip screw goes wasn't machined correctly. It was threaded, or excuse me, it was tapped. And then right at the end, there was a machining defect where it had an overhang and the screws would not engage in the threads that were tapped. So instead of buying a half by 24, I believe tap, which this hole is tapped for, I just grabbed a 9 16th drill bit, drilled it out and then dropped the screw in there. Definitely not textbook, but got the job done for me, and I haven't had any issues with it coming out, so I think that worked just fine in the end. Um, not sure if this is the lower's fault, the parts kit's fault, or my fault, being a dumbass, not setting this uh, hammer spring in on the pin correctly. However, this trigger pin would continually walk out to the side, and it was causing some issues with the safety where everybody knows if the hammer's in the up position in an AR, you shouldn't be able to take this thing out of fire and this thing would go back and forth. So instead of trying to figure out if it was my fault or whatever's fault, I just bought anti-walk pins. Um, I want to say they're CMC trigger anti-walk pins, but don't quote me on that. Um, if you just search AR-15 anti-walk pins on Optics Planet, these will come up and they're about eight bucks. Uh, getting into the lower parts kit, pretty standard. This came with Palmetto's uh, polished enhanced trigger. Now, I'm going to be making a lot of comparisons to my Ruger because that's the only other AR I have a lot of experience with. But Trigger is, I'd probably say, about four, four and a half pounds. 
Um, it's definitely not a Geisley, but it's a hell of a lot better than the trigger I have on my Ruger, which is as stiff as a board. So safety's off. I'll show you gun Nazis out there. A weapon is cleared. So about that much take up, then we start hitting the wall. There's a little bit of grit and then a break. So pretty solid trigger, especially for the cheap price that the builder's kit came with. So moving back into the buffer tube, I just have a standard weight uh, buffer. Honestly, a lot of the guys on the internet will tell you to run a little bit heavier buffer with uh, 300 blackout, especially in this short of a barrel, or if you're running suppressed. I haven't shot this suppressed, obviously, yet, but um, I have a buddy who had an extra A2 buffer laying around. I tried it on his lower, and honestly, the difference, I couldn't even tell, so it wasn't worth me to spend the extra money to upgrade the buffer. Uh, we have a standard six-position tube with a SBA3 brace on it. Now with the SBA4, excuse me, yeah, SBA4, there that eliminates the slop in this thing, but at the end of the day, this is a cheap kit. Honestly, how, how upset could I really be about the wobble? This is branded Palmetto State Armory for you uh, gear fags out there, but honestly, like I said at the beginning, I'm probably the least pickiest person with guns on planet Earth, so as long as it doesn't have a Mom's Demand Action, a.k.a. Mom's With Nothing To Do logo on it, I'm fine with it. Moving up to the optic, this is a Primary Arms 1-4, um, $130 optic on a no-name Amazon mount for, uh, I want to say this is a 30 millimeter tube. The optic itself, for $130, this is probably the cheapest optic you can go for that's worth a damn. Um, for me, it's been all right. Like I said earlier, I'm not the most pickiest person when it comes to weapons, but on a sunny day, if you have this thing cranked up to four power, you get exactly $130 worth of eye relief. And really, what do I mean by that? If you are, this thing has really picky eye relief. So if your face isn't perfectly this far away from the scope, then you're going to have a hard time picking up your sight picture. However, if you on a sunny day and it's giving you troubles, if you crank it back to two and a half power, uh, that seems to work really well for me, and you still get a little bit of zoom over something like a red dot. This does have an illuminated reticle on it as well. I uh, don't really use that unless we're shooting in low light conditions. But uh, besides that, no complaints there. Might upgrade that in the future. We'll see how the budget holds. But for with everything I have done to this rig, I have originally $630 for it. An AccuWedge, because I was getting pissed off with the receiver slop, that was probably, I bought a three pack for nine bucks. So we'll call that three bucks, eight bucks for the trigger. So I have, what, 600 and, or excuse me, for the pins. So $641, everything included in this build. All right, so the million dollar question, how's this thing running? Um, to be honest, I don't have a too terribly high round count through this thing. 300 blackout, even with hand loading, is a little bit more on the expensive side still. Um, so I probably have about 600 rounds through this thing in the year that I've owned it. And I've had two malfunctions. The first one was on a hand loaded round. I believe I trimmed it way too short and I kept getting light primer strikes. Just threw it out, went on to the next round, and it ran flawlessly after that, which is kind of interesting to me because I was, well, I do think that. Uh, bottleneck rifle cartridges shoulder off uh or excuse me headspace off the cartridge shoulder not the case mouth like you do with straight walls or pistols but that's a question for somebody who actually knows what they're talking about not me and then a couple hundred rounds later i was testing these free mags i got with some order they're tool man tactical they look like absolute junk and i was just kind of curious to see if it would be jam city or if they'd be all right and just the way that thing fed I got a failure to feed, but after that, all other 598 rounds have run flawlessly. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I had to do a couple minor modifications, like right here with the pistol grip screw hole. Just drilled that out so I could drop the screw in. Uh, added the anti-walk pins, they're eight bucks. It's not really worth the fuss of trying to figure out what the problem was. At a later time, I had a, my machinist buddy dimple the barrel right here because on my other AR, I had the gas block fall off. So I wanted to make sure that the screws were sitting a little bit deeper and thread locked the shit out of them. And I'm hoping that I won't have any issues running forward with this. So at the end of the day, 
Um, you might hear some guys on the internet saying anything cheaper than a BCM is dog shit and it'll fail on you at some point. Honestly, in my humble opinion, and I'm not some high speed operator, I'm just a basement dwelling boogaloo autist. I think Palmetto State Armory will hold up just fine, except for the uh, gas tube right here. If you've watched any of IV 8888's uh, meltdown videos, that's the first thing to go on the um, on the Palmetto States. But besides that, I think this has a reasonable, about a reasonable quality to it. With some more higher end builds like your BCMs, Noveskis, whatever, you are sacrificing some of the higher end features. Like this had a pretty bad... Uh, wobble to it between the upper and the lower um, the trigger is a little gritty but i still think it's a pretty damn good trigger and a little bit lighter rail things like that those are the things you're really sacrificing so at the end of the day if you're on a budget and you're not too picky like i am this is a perfect build for you thanks for watching this episode of magnum firearms don't forget to like comment subscribe follow us on instagram at magnum firearms uh, thanks for watching this video we'll see you very shortly